Thanks for joining me today. Today we'll be doing a little chickadee painting They're on birch tree branches. And I did this painting on the book page canvas. If you haven't seen my tutorial for how to make a canvas out of old book pages, you can go ahead and go and watch that and make yourself one. Um, all you need to paint along today is three brushes. I've got a round brush and a fine detail brush and a flat brush. You don't have to have the flat brush though, I just use that for putting in the shading on the underside of the branches, you could use the round brush for that too. You don't need to have this. Um, and of course, you need your watercolors. I use the liquid watercolors, but you can use the solid watercolors too. That's all you really need to paint along today. I really hope you enjoy this. I thought this one was pretty fun. I've got my chickadees sketched in and the branches sketched in. You'll see me fill it in as we paint it. So let's start on our chickadees and what we're gonna do first is make a really light gray color. And this is just for the chickadees' wings and their tails. A real pale gray. And I've got round brush here. And I'm just going to... Now remember with the watercolors that these are going to dry a little bit lighter than they're going on the opposite of acrylics. I'm just filling in just where the wings and tail are. Now if you're painting upright like I am on an easel, be very careful about runs in your paint because it will, obviously, it'll want to run down right down the canvas. Now this chickadee is facing us, so you're not going to get as much gray on him because you don't see as much of his wings. He's got a lot of belly showing. bit just down the sides here. And that's all we really need for our gray. I'm going to switch to a finer detail brush and I'm going to make, again we'll be using straight black, but we'll be using a much more concentrated color. So there's going to be less water and more actual pigment in it. Should be very, very inky. Alright, now we're going to go in and just start putting in Put in his little cap, his little black cap. Be very careful here. If you've got a really saturated color, you really don't want this to run. If it does though, I mean, it's not the end of the world. It 
doesn't take long for the little little chickadees to come together and really come to life. They're one of the most simple little birds to paint. Just pick a little tiny black beak. Just tiny. All right, once you've got that in, we can start filling in our wing details. And I'm just going to use the same black to outline where his wings are and all the way down to his tail. I'm going to outline him fully with this black just to make him stand out. You can even come down and his belly just so we can see him better. Alright, now we're going to put in some little feathers in here. I've still got the fine detail brush and I've still got this black. So what we're going to do is we're going to make these little swooshes. They kind of look like the logo for a particular sports brand you just kind of just a few of them right there they don't go all the way up the back you can bring them pretty darn close though and now what you can do we'll put in the long feathers along the bottom here. Yeah. Going right along like this. You can make them nice and fine. And then our tail feathers, let's put in some nice little lines for our tail feathers. They don't have to be precise, we're just putting some lines in here. Alright, now we're going to work on this guy down here. We're just going to go outline them first. Remember to leave that space. This is where, I mean, you can sketch in right here, but this is where the branch is going to come across, so. Make sure not to cover or go over that and break that line there. Put our tail feathers in. And we can put indications of his wings or her wings. I don't think there's too much difference between the male and female chickadees. I've never noticed any anyway in terms of their plumage. Now we're just going to put a little cap in.
and a little chin. Or, again, her little chin. <laughs> We're gonna go through a little bit of brown right underneath the wings. A little bit of the burnt umber and a little bit of the burnt sienna. I'm just making kind of a rusty brown color. Kind of a little rusty brown color, maybe a little more burnt umber. So let's test on this guy. We'll start right under the wing. We'll just brush down some of that color. I think that looks good. We're just coming right from the bottom of the wing. We're just brushing, feathering it down into the belly. I don't have a lot of color or water in my brush. Bring that right back. There. Now for this one, right under his wings right here, and we'll feather it out toward the belly. forgot their little feet. Again, we go in back into the back into the black with the fine detail brush. We we'll just put their little put their little feet clinging to the branch there. Same thing with this one. Now to finish off our little chickadees. We're going to put a little bit of white. You can use a white acrylic for this. That's quite all right. Sometimes I go use just white acrylic for if I have to do white during in my watercolors. I've just got a little white, straight white, and I'm just going to go through. I'm going to add little highlights of white on these wings. Now keep in mind with the watercolors, white is very, very faint and it dries a lot fainter than it goes on. I mean, there are times when I'll put white in something and then when I come back to it once it's dried, you can't even see the white. So. Just be aware that this is going to really fade as it dries, so you can put quite a lot on there. Put some of the tail here. And again, if you want to do this with acrylic paint instead, just to add these little touches in, you can do that. And you can even put some of the white in this open area here. And for the eyes, you can use that white. And 
just a little hint of an eye right there. What I end up doing for the eyes a lot of times, it's, it's kind of like a parentheses, closed parentheses, and then a little dot. You can put a little highlight on the beak a little bit if you want to, or you can just leave it black. That's fine too. But there's our top chickadee. Now let's work on our bottom one. Now for him, he's got a lot more belly showing, so you can move to a bigger brush too to fill in that belly if you want to. Back to your round brush. Just remember that if you are using an acrylic white, to just be careful and remember that it's not going to fade the way that watercolor does. Back to the detail brush. I'm just going to put a little hints. Oh, I just realized I forgot to put the black wing feathers in there on there. We'll go back. Let's finish this white in the tail anyway. In the meantime, let's go back to back to a little bit of black here before we forget. Put our feathers in. And we'll give him his little eyeball here. A little highlight for his beak. Well now that we've got our little chickadees in, we're going to go through and we're going to put our birch tree branches. And first, you're going to want to outline where your birch tree branches are. Now if you've gone through the pencil and sketched it in, this should be pretty easy. You're just following the pencil sketch lines. If you haven't done that yet, you can, you know, freehand your tree branches in. All right. So I'm just following the pencil lines I drew in. And again, I've got this very much like ink. to use a flat brush. You don't have to use a flat brush if you want. If, if you don't have one, you can use your round brush again. I just think it's a little bit easier with the flat brush to do. We're going to do the shading on the underside of the birch tree branch. And all you need for that is some burnt umber and a little bit of black. You don't want it too dark. We just want a nice, we want a dark brown. So I've got this color right here. We're going to test it out. Try. A little bit, a little bit more watered down. Let's. All we're doing is we're putting in some shading here. And I've got this nice and watered down, so it's not going to, once it dries, it's going to dry pretty faint. 
And I'm just putting it on the underside of these branches. Now what we can do is go back to our detail brush. And we're going to go into some really dark brown. We're going to do, again, the burnt umber and the black. This time we want it more saturated, so less water, more pigment. And then we're just going to start putting in some lines, some little stripes, and some spots. So you can just little bands in it and speckles. And then we'll put in you know, some that come right up across the tree and wrap right around that branch. Maybe some come from the other side that don't go quite all the way across. They, you know, that's, that's what makes a birch tree look really convincing, is to have some really big chunks of the black, well not black, but the dark brown color where the bark is peeled off. So you do want to have a few of these really just wide bands of that really dark color. more little branches coming off, going back into this black that I had. I'm going to put these few extra branches. If there's anywhere that you want even more dramatic shadows, you can go through and put some of this black and blend with your finger even. We're not afraid to finger paint. That's <laughs> We learned it when we were in kindergarten or preschool, and I'll tell you what, it still works. What we're going to do now is we're going to go through and we're just going to add some a splash of color in the background here, and I've got the bright blue on my on my tray and I've got the Viridian and I'm just going to take a little bit of both and mix them in with quite a lot of water just making a really pretty greenish blue color it's almost like a cerulean blue so this is the blue I've got here oh. Let's see if I can twist it without uh, it running all over the place and we're going to start just putting some color in. Now if that's, you can go straight into some water if that's too strong. I do it all the time.
Now if you'd like to go in and add a little extra detail to your painting, maybe add a few more branches, add some shading on your chickadees, we'll go back in and we're going to do that right now. You can wait for your painting to dry before you do that, or you can do that while it's still wet. I just like to wait for mine to dry first just so I know, you know how much everything has lightened up and work with it from there. So to begin, I'm going to add a little bit more shading on the wings. And for that, I'm just going to get some water and some black. So it's going to be a, it's not going to be as black as our outlines, but it's not going to be so watered down and light as the gray of the wings and tail. Do it on the underside of the tail here too. And for this one, we'll just add a little bit on the insides here of the wings. I want to add some shading right down here. The branch is going to create a shadow there. Even add a little extra shadow in the middle of the tail here. A little to the outsides. Alright, now we're going to touch up the bellies a little bit, the shading in the bellies of our chickadees. And for that we're going to want burnt umber and a touch of black, just a little bit. Mostly burnt umber. It's just going to be a darker brown than the base color we used, that burnt sienna. We're going to go right under the wing right here. Just adding a little shadow here. And it's going to just blend right down with the burnt sienna. So its darkest point should be right where it, the belly meets the wing. Then it should just kind of fade out into the burnt sienna. We're going to do that with this one right here, too. Right, this inside part right next to the wing. We're going to add just a little more of the burnt sienna to the belly, but we're going to have very, very, very faint color going to be really watered down. We're just going to use that burnt sienna as a little bit of a shadow. It's very faint. Barely any color there. Just going to do the lower part of his belly and maybe a little bit up here just because he would have a little bit of a shadow right there under his chin. It doesn't take a lot of color to create an effective shadow, the illusion of one anyway. Alright, same thing for this guy, right? The under 
part of his belly here. You can even come up into the neck a little bit. It's very faint. All right, now that we've added a little more detail to our birds, we're going to go back through and add just a bit more, um, just a few more branches. Now you can go back to your fine detail brush if you want, or you can try the larger, the round brush like I've got. And you can add just a few more branches coming off. extra details can really can really make a difference, can really bring your painting to life. Just a few extra shadows here and there are sometimes all it needs. Just gonna add that extra little shadow here underneath the bird. This guy too. And if your birds lost their feet when we were doing that, you can go ahead and put their little feet back in. I think I'm going to call this good here and call this a finished painting. So whenever you're done, go ahead and sign your name to the bottom. I really hope you enjoyed painting with me today. Before you go, don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my new classes.